Okay, so welcome back to unit three. We're getting close to the end. We have a couple more videos to talk about, but a good handful of examples to go over as well. So in the last video, we focused on centripetal acceleration, right? That center seeking acceleration. However, if you remember from unit two, if we accelerate an object, we have exerted a force on the object. So what does that mean? Due to centripetal acceleration, there is a centripetal force. So when an object is in circular motion, they're experiencing a centripetal acceleration, which means it's being accelerated, right? If the object's being accelerated, that means there's a net external force exerted on it. Now, this net force is known, shouldn't be an S there, sorry, is known as the centripetal force. And we're going to kind of go with the saying here in a little bit um, about this centripetal force, okay? So, Apparently, I'm only putting in. Okay, so during circular motion, the centripetal force has a constant magnitude and is always directed toward the center of the circle. So it's the same thing with acceleration, right? And the same thing with velocity. So the, the, the magnitude of those values are all equal, but for the centripetal force and centripetal acceleration, it's directed into the center, right? Remember, center seeking, right? Centripetal, that's what it means. It literally means center seeking. Okay, so the centripetal force and acceleration is always perpendicular to what we call the tangential velocity. Because if I have an object, right, in circular motion, that velocity is tangent to the circle. So this is something that we call VT, right? Why is it called VT or tangential velocity? Because remember, a tangent only touches uh, a curve at one point. So when we talked about centripetal acceleration we were, and we had V squared over R, we were looking at that tangential velocity. Okay. Now, the equation for centripetal force is easy. So F sub C, well, how do you find force? Well, Newton's second law says... M times A. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a sub C here. And so if I plug in what C is, right, you end up with MV squared over R. And remember, M is mass. V is the velocity or, or speed. And R is the radius of the circle. Okay. Now, again, so let's, I need everyone to kind of pay attention to this because there's some things here about this centripetal force, okay? When you draw free body diagrams, centripetal force is not a force you draw on the free body diagram, right? So not on FBD, okay? Why? Because the centripetal force is a net force, Right? It's what causes everything, right? Or it's the result of what's happening, right? Tension in the string, normal force in, in a loop on a roller coaster. Um, also, it's uh, friction on roads, okay? It's what keeps our tires on the road when we take turns, okay? In fact, for AP physics, that's one of the questions that they love to ask about is, is talking about that, okay? Um, and so... You see it real, real worldish in these merry-go-rounds, right? In these swings at carnivals and fairs, okay? Amusement parks, okay? The pirate ship does that as well, okay? So let's look at some examples, or let's look at an example problem of how this works, okay? And this, this example is kind of centered around this car going around a turn, okay? So... We have a 1,200 kilogram car rounding a corner with a radius of 45 meters, right? With a speed of uh, 12 meters per second. And we have to find two things, the centripetal acceleration and the centripetal force required to keep it on that path. So right now we're not worried about friction, okay? If I'm looking at it head on from a car, for a car, right? 
you you do have these normal forces here, right? But because this is a car in circular motion, FC is not drawn on the free body diagram. It is the net force. It's the resulting force of everything that is happening, right? Therefore, AC is the resulting acceleration, okay? So in these questions, especially if there's no friction involved, you're just going to simply use the equations. But if friction was involved, right, you would – it would kind of come into play, you know, where is the car, right? Because the acceleration of force would be into the circle, right? And so, right, so there's my FC. Okay. But this is one that's not acting, asking for friction. Okay. Um, so we're just going to find AC, right? So A is going to be the centripetal acceleration. So V squared over R. Okay. So... My V is 12, so that's going to go there. My R is 45, so that's going to go there. And so I'm going to say 12 squared divided by 45. And so 12 squared divided by 45 is 5.76 meters per second squared. So that is my centripetal acceleration. Okay. Now for part B, I'm going to find my centripetal force. So I'm going to do F sub C equals MAC, right? My answer to part A is my um, acceleration, right? My AC, and then my mass is my 1,200 kilograms. So all I'm going to do is 1,200 times 5.76. And that's going to give me the force, which is going to be approximately 6,900 newtons. Okay. And at this constant, this is what my friction would equal. And then you may have to go and find the coefficient of friction between the wheels, right, and the, and the, and the, um, and the ground. Okay. So it's like my friction. So if they did ask anything to do with friction... Right, friction would be either in or out, okay, into or out of the circle, it really doesn't matter. And so then I would do my mu fn, right, where this 6900 would be my frictional force because that's what would keep it in that circular motion. And I just solved that for mu. So mu would be my frictional force over my normal force, which, and again, frictional force is just, or my normal force is just mg in this case, okay. So that's how you would operate with this centripetal force equation. So again, mass times acceleration, but this is a very specific acceleration of V squared over R. And then in the next video, we're going to look at how does it all kind of come together and create what we call a circular, uniform circular.